Okay, uh, good morning everyone and thank you all for uh, joining class. Uh, Monica, just one minute. So how do I open that document? Share. You want to share open? No, no, no. Just click here. Okay. Okay. Just a new laptop and just got this for this class. It's pretty difficult to handle this. Uh, okay, thank you all for joining class and uh, welcome everybody. Uh, last class on Wednesday, we were looking at uh, Romans chapter. Which chapter? Hello? <laughs> Romans chapter. Oh, that's very sad. Only one knows. Romans chapter? Eight. 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 Uh, can you all hear me, online students? Am I audible? Yes, no? Yes, okay. Okay, fine. So we uh, are in uh, Romans chapter 8. And... Um, okay. So in Romans chapter 8, we see that, you know, uh, Paul is now uh, bringing us to a place where he is giving us uh, uh, the answers to the questions that he has been raising, um, to all that he has been, uh, what, all that he has said so far on chapter 6 uh, and chapter 7. And he's, uh, you know, uh, he's chapter 6 and, uh, uh, and chapter 5, he's spoken to us about the wonderful provision that God has made based on uh, the truth of our identification with him. Uh, and he's saying that, you know, God is saying, I have done all this for you, provided this for you, uh, and this has been provided to us for Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ. And in Romans chapter 8, uh, he's telling us how we can walk in this uh, experientially. Okay, so how we can experience everything that God has made available for us, the provision that he's made available for our identification, you know, how we can walk in this experientially. Uh, he's uh, expounding to us, or he's revealing to us uh, in uh, Romans chapter 8. So we looked at uh, Romans chapter 8 um, verses uh, 1 to, we came right up till I think was um, uh, 10. Okay, verse 10. Uh, so verse 10, he says, And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Now, in verse 9, he says, he's spoken to us about the uh, spirit of Christ that is in you. Verse 10, he says, uh, you know, the Christ is in you. And here we see uh, the new title that he gives to the Holy Spirit where he calls him the Spirit of Christ. Okay, so it means all who are uh, in Christ and, uh, you know, uh, all, all who Christ is to us uh, the same way the Holy Spirit is to you and me. So what does it mean uh, by this title, the Spirit of Christ? It means that all who Christ is to us, uh, the same way the Holy Spirit is to you and to me. Okay, so he brings, uh, Holy Spirit is the one that brings Jesus to you and to me. He reveals the plans, the purposes, the ideas, uh, the thoughts, the, the intents of uh, uh, you know, uh, of Jesus, he reveals it to us. Jesus said that he will make known the truth to you. you know, he will He will remind you of everything that I have uh, said. We read about this in John chapter 15, verse 14, and, and, and John chapter 16 as well. So the Holy Spirit is the one who brings uh, Jesus to us. Brings Jesus to us means he uh, reminds us everything that Jesus has spoken, just as, uh, you know, Jesus promised in, in John chapter 15 and uh, John chapter 16, when he's talking about, uh, you know, that him, him sending another helper, John chapter 15. Uh, he says, another helper will come, the spirit of truth. In John chapter 16, also, he 
he says here. He will guide you into all truth. He will, uh, you know, remind you of everything that I have uh, uh, spoken to you. So verse 10, you know, uh, uh, he says, Christ is in you. So how is Christ in you and me? Christ is in you and me by his spirit. Okay. Um, uh, and so he says, if Christ is in you, what is the consequences of that? He says, when Christ is in us, the body is dead because of sin. Okay, so uh, my body, uh, because of sin, uh, has death working in me. Okay, because of sin, uh, what is sin producing in me? It's producing death. So death is working in me. So sin has produced death in my body and sin has caused death to work in the members of my body we've already seen this in the uh, you know uh, in the verses that we looked before and uh, also in chapters 5 and chapter 6 where he's talking about uh, how in chapter 7 where he's talking about how sin produces uh, death okay and he says the body is dead because of my sin, which means my body, because of sin, has death working in me, because sin produces death in my body, and sin has caused my body, uh, sin has caused death to work in my body. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Okay, we are still in uh, verse uh, 10. He says, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So he says, in my spirit, you know, I have received uh, the righteousness of God. You know, uh, we have made new in our spirit man when we are born again. We are new creation. So in my in our spirit man, we have received the righteousness of God. That means we're made right with God. And therefore, you know, you and I have the life of the spirit in us. The life of the Holy Spirit is in us. Okay. Uh, Romans chapter uh, 8 verse 11 says, But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Now verse 10 and 11 is connected. He says Christ is in you because the spirit of Christ is in you. How is Christ in you? Because he's saying the spirit of Christ is in you. Sin has been working uh, in our body, so the body is dead or is dying. When it says it's dead, it does not mean the body is lifeless, but uh, you know, uh, that has been at work in our body, and that is why the body is dead. Okay, so here we need to remember, it says when sin has been working in my body, so the body is dead, it does not mean the body is lifeless, it just means that, you know, the body is dying, okay, uh, because death has been at work in the members of my body, and that is why the body is dead. But the body is dying because, you know, death is, is at work in my body because of sin, but the spirit is life our spirit has the life of god it has the life of the holy uh, spirit so in our body because sin is at work uh, it has death in us but because the spirit of god is in us god gives life to our mortal bodies isn't that so wonderful you know how he's making this beautiful comparison he's saying you know sin is at work in our bodies body is uh, uh, is dying, is uh, undergoing decay, is undergoing corruption. But he says, because the Spirit of God uh, in us, God gives life to our mortal bodies. Amen? So our mortal uh, bodies is death doom. We all know that we are all are going to uh, uh, die one day. Okay, we are death doom means we are eventually all of us are going to die one day. But while we are living here on the earth, uh, you know, because of the spirit of God that is living in me, that is at work in me, uh, the spirit of life that is in me, God is giving life to my death doomed body. Okay, so that is why we said that, you know, we can experience eternal life here and now in the present, even though our bodies are going through 
you know, outwardly our bodies are dying, exhausting, inwardly, you know, our spirits are renewed, uh, our outer man is dying, our uh, bodies are dead too. But we see that, you know, Paul is saying, but in spite of this, in spite of all our frailties, our age, and how age catches up on us, and the different ailments that we go through. But he's saying that, you know, because we have the Spirit of God in us, because we have the Spirit of life in us, the Spirit of life uh, gives, quickens our mortal bodies. The Spirit of life gives life to our mortal bodies okay so he's connecting this back to romans chapter 8 verse 2 romans chapter 8 verse 11 he's actually connecting it back to romans chapter 8 verse 2 where he says for the law of this in romans chapter 8 verse 2 he has already said to us for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death Okay, so sin has been producing death in our body. So while our body is mortal and will die one day, but the Holy Spirit is giving life to our mortal bodies. And hence we can use this, uh, this verse, the scripture for healing for our physical bodies. We can say, you know, the spirit of life is living in me. The spirit of life is giving life to my mortal bodies and because the spirit of life is dwelling in me the spirit of life is giving life to my mortal body every single cell in my body is happy every single cell in my body is well because the spirit of life is giving life to every single cell in my body amen okay i hope you know the song every single cell in my body is happy yes okay uh, the in person students are very excited <laughs> one is already doing the action so sweet okay so you know uh, so every single cell in our body in spite of uh, what our you know we live in a natural uh, world where it's decaying where there is viruses bacteria there's infections we can catch all of those but, you know, in, in the midst of all of that, we can still declare that, you know, every single cell in our body is happy, every single cell in our body is well, because the spirit of life that gives life uh, to my mortal body, to every single cell in my body is living in me. Amen. Okay. So we need to acknowledge that the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death as Paul has already written to us. Okay, You know, we can declare, acknowledge that the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So you and I, you know, should uh, expect till our dying moments uh, and we should expect and say, God, we want to live that life that is coming from the Holy Spirit to fill our bodies, to perfect our bodies, and to keep every single body, uh, every single cell in our body well and happy and healthy. Okay, so we need to expect that. We should expect that till our dying moments, um, and you know, declare it, decree it over our lives, and tell God that you know we want uh, the life that is coming from the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of life that is dwelling in our bodies. Uh, uh, to perfect our bodies and to keep every single cell in our body well, okay? And this is a reality, okay? It's a yes, because the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us, uh, He is a spirit of life, and He will give life to our mortal body. So you can choose to believe this or not. You can choose to declare uh, the scripture portion uh, when, or when, you are, when you're sick or when you're facing some health issues. Uh, you can choose to declare it um, and, uh, you know, or you can uh, choose to believe it or not. But the truth is, the reality is that God quickens our mortal bodies through His Spirit that dwells in me. Okay, so let's just take a little side journey and we'll come back uh, uh, to uh, Romans chapter 8 and continue with um, verse 11. Just take a small side journey. Uh, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 10 and 11. Uh, so please turn, keep your finger on Romans chapter 8 um, and also turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 10 and 11. And also you can turn to Acts chapter 14 verses 19 to uh, 21. So we'll just take a small side journey and we'll just come back uh, to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 10 uh, to 11. So can one of you please read that? 
Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. Can I? Can I, Pastor? Yes, please go ahead. All this bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Thank you, Sri Kumar. So notice what Paul is saying. He's saying the life of Jesus is manifested where? In our earthly body. Okay. And in the same passage, he says, our outward man is perishing. While this is happening at the same time, the life of Jesus, or the spirit of life that is in us, is made visible in our mortal bodies. And, um, and you know, uh, how is it made visible in our mortal bodies? Because he quickens life in our mortal bodies. And so we must say, Lord, let your life be visible in my uh, body. So Paul is saying, while we are suffering in our bodies, in the midst of the suffering, you know, he says the life of Jesus is made visible, which means the spirit of life that is dwelling in us, you know, is giving life to our mortal bodies, is quickening life in our mortal uh, bodies. And why is he able to say this? Because, you know, let's look at one example in uh, uh, Acts chapter 14, verses 19 to 21. Now, Paul is not just writing all of this um, uh, because he's just receiving a revelation, but it's also something that is a reality in his own life. Now, if you look at uh, this uh, incident in Acts chapter 14, verses 19 to 21, it says, and you know, uh, the Jews from Antioch and Iconium, uh, they came there and uh, you know, they persuaded the multitudes to stone Paul and drag him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went to the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas and uh, to Derby. Okay. And what does he do there? You know, he, uh, he preaches the gospel to that city and he makes many disciples. And then he comes back to Lystra and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. So here in this passage, you know, something very beautiful. You know, Paul is traveling uh, throughout the districts of Galatia, which is the southern part uh, of the more, today's modern day is Turkey. Uh, and there are many cities in that place. There's Antioch, there's Lystra, there's Der Derby, there's Iconium. And, you know, some people uh, arouse the crowd and they stone Paul. You know, and the reason why they stone Paul, the main reason why they stone people is so that they can, so they will die. And in the Old Testament, we see that when um, there's a punishment of death, people usually stone them. When Stephen was stoned, he died. So the people stoned Paul. And what happens? Thinking that he was dead, what did they do? They drag him out of the city, supposing that he was um, dead and that is why you know, Paul is able to write what we just read in 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verses 10 and 11 he says we are delivered to death for Jesus sake and we bear in our body the marks of Jesus Christ so all these beatings the stoning these wounds everything you know he says we bear it in our body and then this uh, in this passage in Acts chapter uh, you know uh, Acts chapter 14 says you know, uh, the people suppose that uh, uh, Paul is dead. However, when look at verse 20, it says, however, when the disciples gathered around him, that means when the disciples gathered around Paul, what did Paul do? What did Paul do? He rose up or he got up and he went into the city. Now, isn't this strange? You know, if people have, so many people have stoned him and they dragged him, you know, uh, I'm sure he was not pretending and that he was, you know, they thought he was dead. That means he must be bleeding. He must be really hurt, badly injured. And, you know, what does Paul need at this time? Paul basically, at this time, what does he need? Somebody to bandage him. Uh, he needs a stretcher where they put him on the stretcher and uh, take him and go. But what does the word of God says? He got up by himself. And what does he do? He goes into the city. And uh, another strange thing is the very next day, 
he departs and goes with Barnabas to Derby. And what does he go and do in Derby? He goes and preaches the gospel in the city and makes many disciples, which is an impossibility, yes or no? Imagine you're stoned and you're hurt and the next day you're traveling and you're going to that place and you're preaching and then he has the boldness to come back to these cities where they persecuted him. And then what is he doing? He's strengthening the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, saying that, no, we will go through many tribulations to enter the kingdom of God. Okay. So, um, you know, uh, we see that, you know, um, this is humanly speaking, it is impossible, right? And uh, Paul is also saying that, you know, uh, we are delivered to death, bearing the marks of Jesus in our body and the life of, but he says the life of Jesus is manifest. And this is an example, you know, he's delivered to death, he's stoned till he's almost dead, he's smearing the barks of, uh, you know, all the persecution. But he says, but in our body, the life of Jesus is being manifested, which means the life of God. The spirit of life is supernaturally healed him when the disciples gathered around him. Now, we can't give any other explanation, right? Other than the supernatural healing that has happened. And it's, it only had to be the life of God that changed his body and the spirit of life that has worked in him. So I, I don't know how it must have happened, but whatever has happened, you know, it has happened supernaturally. Whatever God did, it just enabled Paul to stand up on his feet, go into the city, and the very next day travel to another city and preach the gospel. Okay, so this is an example, and that's why Paul is saying that, you know, the spirit of life, he's able to say this in Romans chapter 8, but the spirit of life, and that's why he's able to write it in Romans chapter 8 verse 11, that the, you know, God quickens our mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in us. So coming back to Romans chapter 8 verse 11, you know, Paul is saying God quickens our mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in us, and he's speaking from experience he knows what he's talking about because god is giving he knows that god is the giver of life he gives life to our mortal bodies through his spirit that is living in us so based on romans chapter 8 verse 11 you know i want us to expect the spirit of life to touch and work in our mortal bodies just let it not just be there in the pages of uh, scripture, this holy book, but let it become a reality like it was a reality in Paul's life. So we can just expect that the spirit of life will touch our mortal bodies, whatever sickness, whatever disease, whatever syndrome that we are having, whatever, we can use it also to people that we are praying for, just declare this verse of scripture and just believe God and God comes through with his uh, word because the spirit of life living in us quickens our mortal um, body. So when you are ministering to people, you know you can tell them that the Holy Spirit in uh, is in them for a reason. But there are many reasons why the Holy Spirit uh, is in them. You know there are many things the Holy Spirit does. He teaches us. He guides us. He counsels us. He guides us into all truth. He reveals the mind of God to us. Uh, you know He uh, gives us the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, uh, you know He's a Spirit of adoption. Uh, uh, and all of those things, so the many things that he does, one of the things that the Holy Spirit also does is he gives life to our mortal bodies. He quickens life in our mortal bodies. So you can pray and say, God, touch my mortal body through the life of your spirit that is dwelling in my body. Give life to my body. Give strength to my body. Okay. So we'll move on to verses uh, 12 to verse 17. So can somebody please read out aloud verse 12 to verse 17, please? Anyone can read verses 12 to verse 17? I hope all of you are there with me in the online class. Yes? Can somebody please read Romans chapter 8, verse 12 to 17? Yeah, go ahead, Asha. Thank you, brethren, 
in shadow and in Christ, and gives a little things to the God, here the sons of God. For yet I have not seen the spirit of bondage in him to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, where by we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bearing witness to our spirit that we are the children of God. Children then hear the spirit of God and join heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Thank you. Uh, so, I hope all the online students are following with me. Uh, yes, no? Yes, Pastor. Yes, okay. Uh, any questions so far? Verses 10 and 11, any questions? Okay. No questions. If there are no questions, we'll move on to verses 12 to 17, which was just read to us by Asha. So then, you know, Paul says, uh, so what's the conclusion? You know, of all that he's spoken to us so far, he's, he come brings, uh, he's bringing us to a conclusion in verse 12. He says, therefore, therefore means you know, all that Paul has been saying, uh, all that he has told us so far, he's saying, okay, so now let's sum it all up. So therefore, therefore, brethren, and we know he's uh, speaking to brethren, he's speaking um, to the believers. And he says, you know, uh, we are debtors not to the flesh, uh, to live according to the flesh, verse uh, 11. Okay, he says we're debtors not to the flesh, to live according to uh, the flesh. So, so when our flesh uh, cries out for attention or the, uh, or the flesh is telling us to do some things, the carnal nature we're talking about, the evil desires of the flesh is crying out for attention, is you know, forcing us, is prompting us, leading us to do something, then we need to tell our flesh, hey, I don't owe you anything, okay? I'm not your debtor, I don't owe you anything. I don't have to pay you attention. I don't have to give in to the desires and the drives of the flesh. Okay, so that is what he says when he's saying in verse 12, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, uh, to live according to the flesh. And then in verse 13, he says, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Okay, so verse 13, he says, for if, okay, uh, just mark that if, he says, for if you live according to flesh, you will Died. So if means only if you live by the flesh, what will happen? You will die. This is the same warning he has mentioned earlier uh, in the verses that he's reiterating. Um, you know, he says, but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So the believers by the spirit, by the help of the Holy Spirit, can put to death the deeds of the body. Okay, so verse 13, he says, so if you live according to flesh, you will die, but it says, but if, okay, we need to make a choice, but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you would live. So uh, the believer, by the spirit, by the help of the Holy Spirit, uh, can put, will put to death the deeds of the body or the sinful desires of the Body. And what is the result? The result is that when you uh, put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. But if you live according to the flesh, what is the result? You will die. Okay. So this is how the believer lives victorious over the flesh. Uh, and how do they live victorious over the flesh? It is by the spirit. Um, because, you know, we've already seen that Paul mentioning and saying, because the law of the spirit of life sets us free from the law of sin and death. Okay, so how does a believer live victorious of the flesh? It is by the spirit, because it says, by the spirit, you can put to death the deeds of the body. So the Holy Spirit, the spirit of life, not only quickens life in our mortal bodies, but the Holy Spirit also enables us to put to death the deeds of the body. Okay, verse 14. All of us, you know, uh, it says here in verse 14 that all of us, uh, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So all of us who are the sons of God, we are led by whom? 
we are led by our flesh, right? No, we are led by the Spirit of God. So if you are sons and daughters of God, and if you find ourselves being led by our carnal nature, by our flesh, by our, um, by our evil desires, then we need to question our salvation experience. You know, sometimes our salvation experience is only we have made Jesus Christ as our Savior, not as Lord. It says all of us who are sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit of God. We are not led by the flesh, but by the Spirit. If you are led by the flesh, then you do what the flesh tells you to do. But if you are led by the Holy Spirit, which means you are doing what the Holy Spirit is asking you to do, you are led by the Holy Spirit, and we, when we are led by the Holy Spirit, we follow the Holy Spirit. Okay, we also saw this uh, last uh, on Wednesday how, you know, uh, in Galatians chapter 5 talks about how we need to walk in the Spirit. Uh, here also Paul mentions that, you know, how to live in the Spirit, how to be led by the Spirit. Led by the Spirit basically means that we are just following the direction, the leading, the prompting, the steering, um, and we're totally in submission uh, to the Holy Spirit. Okay. So the Holy Spirit leads us and we will follow him. And that's when we know that we are truly sons and daughters of the of, of the living God. Okay, in verse 15, he says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So here he's making a contrast. He's making a contrast um, from, uh, 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 of the spirit of bondage and the spirit of adoption okay now the spirit of bondage is a spirit that puts us into captivity okay when we are uh, living in sin when we are pleased uh, when we are uh, led by the flesh we are giving in to the evil desires of the flesh then we are uh, you know under the spirit of bondage because we are under the bondage of uh, of, of sin okay and it puts us into captivity but the spirit of adoption Okay, the spirit of adoption, it brings us into uh, the sonship. Okay, it, the spirit of adoption, uh, uh, you know, gives us this, uh, this, uh, this identification that we are sons and daughters of, the, of God. And hence, we can call him Abba, Father. You know, it just, he uses this word Abba because Abba is a you know, an Aramic term, and they use it for, you know, a very close, intimate relationship with the uh, Father. So he says we can call him above Father. And how can we call him above Father? Because uh, we, we, through the spirit of adoption, uh, you know, brings us into a place of sonship. So here we see a new title of the Holy Spirit. What's the new title of the Holy Spirit here? In this verse 15. Yeah. Spirit of adoption. Thank you, Abina. So you know, uh, uh, you know, Paul has already uh, given uh, you know uh, a type, two titles already for the the Holy Spirit that we saw in this chapter. He calls him the Spirit of Life. Thank you, and the Spirit of Christ. Okay, and now he's uh, referring the Holy Spirit as Spirit of Adoption. So, so we see three new titles of the Holy Spirit here: Spirit of Life. A spirit of Christ and the spirit of uh, adoption. Okay, so Holy Spirit does not put us in bondage or slavery, does not keep us in fear because Second Timothy says we have not received a spirit of timidity or of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So anything that brings bondage and fear is not of the Holy Spirit, it's not from God. But the Holy Spirit brings us into this wonderful place where we are these liberated sons and daughters of God. Why do we say liberated? Because we are liberated from darkness into light. We are liberated from uh, death into eternal life. We are liberated from sin into holiness. Uh, we are uh, uh, liberated from... Uh, from unrighteousness to righteousness, to being justified, uh, to be made uh, holy. We are liberated from being unholy to be uh, holy. So the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of adoption, and He is the one who liberates us. Okay, so verse 16 of Romans chapter 8 says, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit 
that we are children of God. Okay? How do we cry out, Abba, Father? It's because the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. So the Holy Spirit is unveiling to us the work of the Holy, of the Holy Spirit in the life of our a believer okay so when uh, uh when we are born again you know the whole we are uh, born again in our spirit man okay and our spirit man is uh, made a new creation and that is why our spirit man relates to god who is spirit relates to the holy spirit so the holy spirit reveals the plans the purposes the ideas the intents the the knowledge the wisdom uh, the direction the leading uh, of uh, god uh, into our spirit man why because our spirit man is connected with the holy spirit it's joined with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit himself bears uh, witness uh, with our spirit that we are the children of God. And because of that, we can cry out, Abba, Father. So he's basically in this verse, he's unveiling to us the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. He says we are led by the Spirit. Uh, yeah, now he's saying that we, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit okay the holy spirit bears witness with our spirit i'm sure you learned this uh you know when we looked at it in receiving god's guidance for our life um uh, in the first semester uh, the first year uh you learned about this okay how the holy spirit bears witness with our uh spirit because we are joined together with the holy spirit and he uh in our spirit man he bears in a witness and we've seen different ways that the holy spirit bears witness in our inner witness uh, in our uh, to the inner witness of our spirit how does the holy spirit bear witness to knowing to uh, uh, to a steering uh, to the scriptures um, to the prompting okay um, uh, to a warning so all of these ways the holy spirit bears witness uh, in our spirit man so the spirit himself bears witness means uh, the holy spirit himself testifies uh, uh the it uh, what does it mean bear witness it means the holy spirit testifies or it's uh, the holy spirit speaks affirmingly or the holy spirit speaks convincingly in our spirit man telling us hey this is god's plan this is god's idea this is what god's um, uh, purposes for your life this is the direction he wants you to take this is where he wants you to go so testify means you know he speaks affirmingly he speaks uh, convincingly we also know that uh, you know uh, uh, we have the mind of christ why do we why do we say that we have the mind of christ because the holy spirit reveals the mind or the heart of god into our spirit man and that is why we say we have the mind of christ because whatever is in the mind of christ his plans his purposes his ideas his intents uh, for us the holy spirit reveals it to us and hence you know uh, paul writes and he says we have the mind of christ okay so here we see that the holy spirit bears witness with our spirit which means that there is communication because we are joined together with uh, our spirit man when we are born again it's where it's it's in our spirit man that the holy spirit communicates to our spirit okay and uh, the holy spirit does a, a whole lot of other things as well he is a law of the spirit of life uh, that helps us overcome the flesh uh, he is the spirit of life that gives life to our mortal bodies. He is also the spirit of life who leads us. So here in Romans chapter 8, Paul is basically unveiling to us many different facets of the Holy uh, Spirit. Okay, So he's the spirit of life who speaks to me. He bears witness in my spirit. Um, uh, and one of that we see in verse 16 where he uh, you know, where he bears witness with our spirit, which means he's testifying, he's speaking, he's giving us evidence, he's giving us uh, conviction. What is uh, he bearing witness here? What is the witness that he's bearing here for us in verse 16 that we are the children of God? So in this particular case, what is the Holy Spirit bearing witness 
or what is he testifying, what is he speaking, what he's giving us assurance, what he's giving us conviction, what he's giving us evidence is that, you know, he's bearing witness in our spirit man, he's convicting us, he's giving us the, uh, uh, the witness, of the, testifying to us that we are the children of God. So if somebody asks you, what is your birth certificate? What is your birth certificate? Huh? You can tell them my birth certificate is Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So this is your uh, birth certificate. Okay, The Spirit himself bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, the child of God, the son or the daughter of God. So I know I'm a child of God because the Holy Spirit bears witness with my spirit. Okay? And verse 17, he says, if children then heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, then we may also be glorified together with him. So he says here, and if children, you know, if children actually puts us into a very esteemed, a very privileged, a very honorable uh, position that we are children of God, and not just children, but we are heirs of God and joined heirs with Christ. Okay, so by using this terminology, heirs uh, uh, of God, joined heirs with Christ, basically he's using kingdom terminology. Okay, he says that basically we belong to the kingdom of God and as people who are belonging to the kingdom of God, we are heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. And hence, he says, you know, as heirs, we are successors of the kingdom of God. God has given us the kingdom. He's given us the kingdom, the keys of the kingdom, the authority, the dominion to rule in his kingdom. So this is who we are. Who are we? We are not just children of God, but we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And also we share everything with Christ. Even though we are not deity, he is only deity, he is alone God, we are not God. But, you know, but all that Paul has conveyed to us, all of the blessings, um, um, all of the, uh, you know, the, the gifts that we have received, uh, because of the truth of our identification in Christ Jesus, which he has conveyed to us in chapter 5, 6, and 7, he says we share in all that Christ has accomplished on the cross. Okay, uh, and he has just listed out so many things. We have the right standing in grace. Because of that, you know, we are loved by God. We have peace with God. We are no, no longer enemies of God. Uh, we are justified. We are made righteous. Um you know, or we have eternal life, um, we have the spirit of life. And so he's just listed out, you know, numerous blessings that we have received because of our identification uh, with Christ. And he says here, we share in all that Christ has accomplished on the cross. We share in his righteousness because he has become righteousness to us. We share in his authority because he raised us up. Remember, he raised us up. And he has seated us with the Father. We seat the right hand, the Father, along with Jesus Christ. He has given us the authority, and hence we are co heirs with Christ. So we should not only um, share in this blessing that we are children of God and also heirs of God, co heirs with Christ, but we also share with everything that Christ has accomplished for us on the cross. Okay, so it says here that, uh, you know, we also, uh, verse uh, 17, indeed we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together. Okay, so he says that, um, you know, um, he says that even if we suffer, we know that we will be glorified. Uh, why do we know that we will be glorified? Because we are children of God, we are heirs of God, co heirs with Christ. So the suffering here uh, is what, uh, what is the suffering here he's talking about? You know, where he says, you know, uh, where he says, indeed, we suffer with him that we also be glorified. So in this context, the suffering here is what he's mentioned in verse 13. In verse 13, he, he says, uh, you know, put 
to death the deeds of the body. So, you know, we, uh, as human beings, you know, people living on this earth, we all suffer. We suffer persecution, we suffer hardships, we suffer, uh, uh, you know, uh, sickness, we suffer different health issues. But the suffering in verse 13, uh, uh, he says, uh, you know, uh, he has said is to put to death the deeds of the body okay and that is and this is not easy for us to do so this is the suffering that he's talking about what is the suffering that he's talking about he's saying to put to death the deeds of the body okay so we'll pause here because our time is up uh, anyone has any questions any questions anyone has I hope you were able to understand. Yes, no? Yes, ma'am. OK. OK, fine. Then uh, we'll end class here. Uh, thank you. No questions from anyone? I hope you all are enjoying Romans chapter 8. Uh, OK. I hope it's not going over your heads. I hope you're enjoying it. OK. Okay, uh, I post the, uh, the assessment one uh, on the website so on Monday, and uh, you can have it over on Tuesday. I'll post it by 5 p.m. on Monday, which is 5 p.m. Indian Standard Time, IST, and then you can, uh, which is 11.30, I think, GST, um, and you can uh, submit it the, the next day, Tuesday by 5 p.m., okay? Thank you all for joining class. Have a, a blessed uh, weekend. God bless you all. See you all on Wednesday. God bless you. Thank you, first. Thank you. Sorry, somebody said something? Harrison? Harrison, do you want to say something, Harrison? Just okay.